friends, welcome to another episode of Table Gamers Apocalypse, episode number two, with me, Stephen Hesse. Now, you clicked on this episode because you're wondering to yourself, what are we going to do this week? And if you've listened to last week's show, you will know that, and that will be completely meaningless, but this is an attempt at me, the geek that I am, to be all messy. But anyway... Welcome to the show. Um, so as you know from last week, if you did see this uh, last week's episode, we did Munchkin Apocalypse. If not, uh, please check it out. But this week, we're going to be reviewing and deciding whether uh, we will be put bringing this to an apocalypse if an apocalypse happened. Would I take this board game? And the board game we're doing this week is... Starflux. So, follow me. No, seriously. This way! Okay, now I'm going to show you uh, Starflux as it was delivered to me uh, when I ordered it, obviously. That makes perfect sense. Um, you can play this with up to two to six players, um, and it lasts roughly... I'd say uh, you can play you can play this in ten minutes, as I'll explain when I show you it, or you can play it up to... I mean, I've seen games that last up to an hour. On the box, it says 40 minutes, um, but, re you know, really... Um, I can say go longer than that, all dependent on how many players you've got currently in the game. But when I explain the mechanics, you'll understand... Uh, the, with the rules of the game that the rules keep constantly changing that it's actually quite hard to kind of manipulate yourself to win the game as I'll explain but uh, this is the part where I show you the packaging so this is what it comes in um, Star Flux um, show it that way so you can see it um, yeah so that pretty nice packaging like most board, like most card games of this nature is I did make a mistake in the intro I said a board game uh, for this this is actually a card game so if I open it up um, open the box up and then you get the flux cards now inside is these two compartments uh, which are there um, and uh, and inside is the two the two uh, all the cards that you use for the game you use all of them and the two separate compartments and that's it um, prices range from about 10 to 15 pound uh, and um, I should say at this point for those that aren't aware Flux the game uh, this is called uh, as I show you this is Star Flux there is ra there is normal Flux there's Cthulhu Flux there's Pirate Flux um, there's, there's a, and there's a few others that I can never remember but there's a loads of variations this is my particular favorite um, I also like the original Flux version as well but they're the only two I've played apparently Pirate Flux is pretty fun um, but again, I've not played it, so I'm just going to show you um, the very similar mechanics other than in Star Flux is one uh, particular difference, uh, which I think makes it more fun. Um, but I will show you that uh, in a second, so if you give me a second, I will set up. Okay, um, this is the um, official setup for Star Flux, how you uh, would set up every particular game. I should mention that I forgot to mention, I forgot to show you that there is an, uh, an, an, um, an instruction manual included in the package that I forgot to show you, but I assumed you would have known that. And as I'll, as I'll show you through actually um, telling you about the mechanics of Star Flux, um, you're really not going to be looking at that at a particularly good time. Um, uh, so, because uh, you'll see that the rules, although they're constantly in flux, ha ha ha, which lots of you know, just like me are gonna appreciate. Um, but um, what's great, uh, the, the the rules are so simple and they're all constantly changing that really all you need to realise is that really flux is gonna beat you in terms of rules. So you're not really gonna have someone going, I'm sorry, but I don't think that's an official move. Believe me, if it's if it if it sounds like a rule that shouldn't be, chances are it's flux. Um, but we'll show you that as we go along. So, um, as this is a German setup, and by what I mean by that is you start off with the, the, the basic rules. Um, so, if you ever, like, um, when you finish the um, uh, a basic rule game, uh, when you finish a basic rule game, when you finish a, a flux game, um, my suggestion is to put the basic rules at the top because you always start any flux game uh, with the basic rules. Uh, what do I mean by basic rules is um, whatever rule is in play 
uh, at the beginning of the person's turn you have to abide by. So the basic rules to start the game is you draw one and play one. And what I mean by that is you draw one from the deck per turn and you play a card from your hand per turn. That is mandatory. You can get cards that change that, um, as I'll explain um, as we when we keep going. So in terms of setting up as well, um, you get three cards per player. So if you're playing with four players, you put three cards, you give them three cards each. Um, and what I said earlier on, which I love about Flux, is why it's in a state of Flux, is that really also the Space Ten Continuum is changed because in terms of games because what is so ridiculous about Flux is that if you're playing for like say 20 minutes or uh, and still nobody's won you can deal someone else in and it makes no difference and um, so what so when someone comes up and says I'm sorry but we're kind of 20 minutes in and you can't really play well screw them because you can and um, which is why uh, Flux is so awesome um, so it, but for the purpose of this tutorial I'm not gonna obviously deal three cards out of people who don't exist so for the sake of this, um, I'm not going to adhere to having just three cards because I'm going to show you what each card does and that's pretty much it. Um, so it's going to be a lot shorter, for example, than me episode one with Munchkin, which has a lot more difficult rules um, to show you. Um, so as I said, basic rules, draw one, play one, uh, and that's the deck and the cards. So let's get into this. So, um, so for example, if um, I'll choose the three cards that are on top of here, as you can see, I have more cards to show you. Um, but I, um, but we'll but we'll go along with it as we go along. So um, if I use these as a protector, for example, uh, for my first hand, then I drew, uh, a, uh, I drew a new rule. Uh, I drew a keeper, and I drew a goal. Now. Uh, so in, so let's stick to new rule. Uh, what I could do this turn is um, I could draw one, which I will in a minute. Um, well, actually, no, let's do that now. So if I draw one, I get, an, I get another goal card. Um, which I'll show you now, uh, which you will just would have just, just seen. Um, so my options in regards to the basic rule is draw one and play one. So I've drew one and got a goal. So now I can play one of these cards. So now, what, I want, what do these cards do? Well, I have a new rule, which is draw five. So I could play the new rule, um, put it next to the, the put it next to the basic rule card. So instead of drawing uh, instead of drawing one card, I'm drawing five, which means that instantly that instant rule comes instantly into play. Um, so that means I have to draw an extra four cards. But for the purpose of this, is I won't do. It. Well, okay. Well, actually, let's do that. Let's, and um, so I'll let's, I'll use the ones that I've got here. So let's pretend I drew these. So I have a new rule, hand limit two. I have a creeper. Um, I have a surprise. And I have an action card. So that was four extra cards because I drew five. I already drew one. So there's four different. So I draw four cards. So let's pretend I drew that off the top of the deck. Because the reason why I add these separate is because these are all the different cards you can get. So, I now have five because I changed the rule to make it for, to have four extra cards. Your hand limit is seven. That's very important. So if you ever get down to seven, you have to uh, you have to discard a card every per turn. Um, so, um, so what I what I have here is um, a little bit of variation, which is the reason I did it this way. So I so let's say I did that. So I changed the rule. That means the person who comes next has to obey that rule or do what I did and change it. Um, but because I drew five and I can't play, I've already played that card during my last turn. Then um, I can't play any more cards. But for the purpose of this, obviously we're not playing any, playing with any other players. That I want to just explain what the cards do. So um, so let's stick to what I drew originally. I uh, drew a keeper. The object of the game is to uh, complete the goals, uh, the goal that's in play. So for example, if I didn't draw that, um, and let's, let's so put that back in my hands, but let's pretend that didn't happen, I could have uh, put down a goal. Now that goal means if people, if any people play uh, the distant planet or alien city in front of them, have them both at the same time, they win the game. And that's pretty much how you win. Now, how do you, what, what do I mean by keepers? Keepers are such thing as the computer that I drew at first hand. 
with the idea is you, you play a keeper and you play it in front of them. Now, the computer is a good example because some of them have special abilities. For example, this computer says if you have this card on the table, you can draw and play one extra card per turn. And you can also exceed your hand and keeper limits by one, which is awesome. So that can count um, as an extra an, an, an extra action, so it doesn't apply to the basic rules. That's why people like the computer cards, pretty awesome. So, um, so say for example, as I said earlier, I um, I didn't. Um, so that's an example of playing a goal. So if I played that goal, the current goal would be uh, playing the distant planet or alien city, right? So let's pretend I didn't play it. So that that was one option. So I could play a keeper card, um, which is which would be very clever to do so, um, and the object because it's the object of the game. Oh, there you go. Aren't I awesome? So you play a keeper card. Uh, and you play it in front of you, so pretend this is my hand that I'm just moving out of the way, out of the shot. Um, and I play the keeper card. That means if I play a goal with uh, with the computer as one of the goals, then I would be halfway to winning. But if I say, say we kept the draw five card and somebody else played that, um, then um, and and uh, or or I keep that and and that applied, then um, I have a problem because I drew a creeper. Uh, a creeper is if anyone has a creeper in their hand, they or or draw it like I did in the if I drew four like I, like we, like I said earlier, um you can't win the game, um and uh, so I get pain parasites. This is attached to any human keeper or any keeper that you have uh, as a priority or or just any keeper at all. So if I had played the keeper from before, say I didn't do the draw five and I. Had the creeper in my beginning, and I uh, or I or I drew drew it from my as one of my um, drawn cards from one of my turns. It would attach itself to um, the computer. So um, if I have a creep, if you have a creeper, you can't win. You can get keepers like that eradicate brain parasites. For example, you can have um, the laser pistol, which kills which kills creeper cards, and you can also get goals that if you play them can act. Positively, if you have creepers, but they are a lot rarer than the, the normal goals you can get. Okay, so if I had one action, like I, like if I had one action earlier, like I said, I could, I could. So let's put these all back into play. I could, for example, um, change the rule. So what any player can do at any time with the cut. So if I had all these cards in play, which is highly unlikely, but for the benefit of the tutorial, um, is I could change the rule if I want to. So I could draw five. I could change the rule for this, for example, for this one to change the hand limit. I could play a keeper. Um, I could play a goal, um, which obviously helps me win the game. Um, if I have the cards, that is. Um, or I have uh, an action card. Um, an action card um, can, has, has to be played during your turn, and they're all different. This particular one is called Space Jackpot. Uh, the which means I draw five extra cards, add them to your hand, and then I discard two, um, which is great. Um, and then that goes into the discard pile. So you just put that next to. Um, so for example, if I move that along and make a discard pile here, and that would be the discard pile. So awesome. So um, so then I would do that, and then I would draw five, and then I would get rid of two, um, which is great. Um, if you don't have a Keeper in play, and I got a Creeper, which I said earlier, so if I drew a Creeper, um, your Creeper just um, stays in front of you until you get a Keeper, which obviously ha ties you, makes your hands tied, because if you play a Creeper, keeper, the Creeper instantly attaches itself. So Creepers are not, nice, are not nice, but as I say, you can get a goal which makes you wins with Creeper in play, which is, which, but as I say, that's a lot surprising. So action card that I just played, um, can only be played during your turn and for example the draw five cards is one of the examples and there's loads of different variations of actions. You can also get cards for surprise. Um, what's cool about surprises is that you can have an out of turn action and a during your turn action. So you can play it when it's not your turn another person's player. So for example with this it's a trap card is cancel any single action in which another player is stealing a keeper you have on the table and instead you steal one of theirs. Which is a great card if someone's trying to steal something to win the game. You Instead of them taking you, you could take the one and you win. The, you can take the one that you need to uh, stop to win with a goal that's in, in place. So it's a really cool card. It also stops people stealing the keepers, which is never nice. 
Um, also, but the one during your turn, so it gives what's good about it, it gives you multiple options, uh, is all of the players must use a card to discard while you draw two. Which is cool because if someone's got like maybe only one card to mess with, you can get them to get rid of it and you get two extra cards to play with, so that's cool. And um, that is uh, pretty much it. Um, so the object of the game is you play a goal that matches what keepers you have in play, try and avoid keepers. Um, you can change the rules at any time. And it really is as crazy as it sounds. Um, anything, anything can happen. Um, anything can happen because you don't really know what you, you can't really predict what the other player is going to do. And, and as soon as you play a goal, um, and then someone else. Uh, so if we play strange powers, unseen force, and energy being is what wins. You can then play a goal, person play a goal the next turn. And then all of a sudden you may have half. You may have one of the keepers needed for that goal. But all of a sudden someone has changed the goal, and it no longer matters. Um, so that's what's really cool about this game, is that um, it is really unpredictable, and um, I must have played about 15 games of it now uh, since I since I bought it, um, and I played it before then, and um, it never gets old. It's awesome. It's a great game. Um, so I highly recommend people to play it. Um, so yeah, I've pretty I think I pretty much covered everything. Um, uh, yeah, um, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I'll just double check. Um, yeah, um, as I say. Um, also, um, just be aware that, as I said, really important key is that uh, keepers can do certain things. Um, and uh, what's cool about it is it's based on, you know, sort of the sci-fi genre Star Fox. So that's half the reason why I like it. I'll be brutally honest. I'm a huge Star Trek fan. So, um, so that's half the reason why I like it. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, so, of the first person to, um, first person to, uh, to achieve the goal that's currently in play at the time that they've played whatever they've played. Uh, wins the game, and that is Starflux. Um, so I'll be back now to um, to decide whether or not um, it joins me uh, if the if I would take it if an apocalypse happened. Um, uh, so let's find out. So that's it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed my um, run through of Starflux. So this is the part of the episode where I say if there was an apocalypse, heaven forbid. Um, and I required to take uh, a board game or a card game or anything that, like that and I had a choice of what games I would take as a last minute thing as I shoot off to try and stop myself from getting killed uh, what games would I bring and uh, out of the ones I review which one would I take, which stuff would I take uh, Munchkin Apocalypse and Episode 1 uh, for those that didn't see it um, I, would like to, to, I would like to take that so that is on the list uh, so what do I think about Starflux. Well, um, I really, really like it in terms of rating, in terms of the Geek Apocalypse rating. I would give it 8 out of 10, or maybe 8.5. Um, and the reason for that um, is I don't think it has as much sort of uh, brilliance as Munchkin does in terms of um, how fun it is to, uh, to, to mess about with and, and all that kind of thing. And I think the mechanics are slightly more uh, entertaining. Uh, no offense to Starflux. Um, but it's not a human being, so it can't take offence. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, in that regard, Munchkin has a little bit more sort of. Uh, you feel a little bit more involved in it. It's not sort. You're not sort of a byproduct. Um, Flux kind of brilliance is the fact. Its mechanic makes you feel like uh, you're kind of just a byproduct of of actually playing it because it's so brilliantly crafted. Which is not a criticism. I'm just saying. It's just a slightly different game. Um, as I explained during the review, I regard this I regard Starflux as kind of a kind of pick up uh, and just play. If like you can't be bothered to play like a three hour game of like of, of like Pandemic or or um, or a Grillo or something like that um, or Battlestar Galactica, for example, then uh, then it's a great game to kind of start the night with. Um, if, uh, in regards to our uh, Newcastle Gamers, which is the board game club I'm a member of, um, we play stuff like this at the beginning all the time. It's just a kind of nice getting your brain going kind of thing. Um, so in that regard, uh, its replay value I would give 9 out of 10, um, which is I believe I, where I gave was more than Munchkin Apocalypse. And the reason for that is, as I say, um, it's not like um, you could play Munchkin Apocalypse enough so that... that um, Eventually you're going to reach the point where you're going to know what people are going to be playing and kind of have what items they may have and there's an element of understanding if you play it enough. I'd say if you played Munchkin Apocalypse about five times you can kind of pick up enough of the cards if you're just playing one version that is, you can mix them up. 
uh, with the other Munchkin versions, but if you're just playing more like Munchkin Apocalypse, like I said in episode one, then um, you can pretty much figure out what the cards are and what what people have, um, and you know the majority of stuffs in front of you with Starflux, you don't see any of the cards. And as I showed uh, through through the uh, through the review and demonstration, you literally a lot of the time people who play Starflux have no idea. Um, they have really no um, uh, idea about the mechanics of any, uh, like uh, as in you, there's no you can't really you can't really think ahead. And um, there's only a few cards in the deck, such as like you can uh, get a card that lets you look through the discard pile. That's pretty much the only uh, time I've seen where it kind of has an advantage, um, because you can kind of figure out what to play at what time. And obviously you can do stuff like if I draw five and hope I get the keeper I need, then I can play the keeper. It's stuff like that. But if it's fairly limited, um, so but as I saw in that sense, the reason why the replay value is so great is because really I've, as I say, I've played this maybe 30, 40 times, uh, probably even more than that, and um, the games have never been the same, um, and um, I've never had a chance to winning, and but in 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 and it's still one of the few games you can turn around and go, damn you cards, the cards are oh, the cards are harsh. And really, actually, um, people have to accept that as an excuse because majority of the time it is. Although, having said that, one uh, there was um, one game, I, one of my earliest games I played of Flux, where I started um, discarding creepers, which is just stupid. Um, but I didn't really quickly, I didn't really pick up uh, the game that well. So, um, so yeah, you can be as stupid as me sometimes and make an element of mistake, but it's really hard. It's really hard to to mess up Flux. So yeah. Um, I regard this is on my reserve list, as in I might take it if there was an apocalypse. And the idea is, so I want to do about ten of these, and then kind of pick five maybe, uh, or something like that. But I'm definitely going to have like a, a recap episode at the end of this and kind of explain more in detail about why I chose the the, the board game or card game or table game, uh, and why I wanted why I would take it on an apocalypse. So um, yeah, but um, all in all, great game. So yeah, 8.5 8, 8 in terms of the game itself is a brilliant idea, but 9 in terms of replayability, and maybe in terms of taking it on an apocalypse. Um, so yeah, uh, any questions, please go down to the comment section. Um, and please, uh, uh, if you had the, the foresight to list to, to, to go f to look for all this, which I really, really appreciate, um, comment about anything you see here because I'm going to really really try and get some original, more original YouTube content on here, I'm going to try and update it as much as I can. There's a few things coming up on this channel that you should be aware of, that you need to be aware of, like um, we're going to be doing some more music stuff uh, in Newcastle, England, like some heavy metal bands are coming up that we're going to be interviewing and um, loads more geek stuff, I'm going to conventions. Uh, so I'm going to be putting loads of uh, like 10 minute interviews on YouTube and, um, and I'm trying desperately behind the scenes to get more content like this, my own original stuff. So do please subscribe uh, and, uh, and keep up with everything, uh, I would, that, would be, that would be awesome. Um, next week's episode I'm unsure about what I'm going to be doing because um, I don't have all my board games at home currently. Um, maybe Pandemic uh, is something I'm definitely going to do, a, do an episode about, it's one of my favourite games of all time. I might do there's a, a friend. I might do King of Tokyo as well because I think that's an awesome game. Um, and also um, called Oriko, um, which is like a Japanese orientated game. I think you can get it in Germany or something. But I'm trying to find a copy that we played at Newcastle Gamers, which is like a really small, like recycle game. Which sounds weird, but you basically recycle garbage and um, get points. Um, but then I really, really like the mechanic, um, so I'm going to try and get a copy of that. Um, and I would like to do that on the show. Um, but just uh, keep keep tabs with it and um, keep keep uh, supporting me. Um, I really appreciate. I would really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, that pretty much covers it. Um, so tune in and I try and do this every fortnight. So um, join me in a fortnight where I say possibly pandemic, possibly Oracle, or there's a few other things I'm looking into, like maybe um, maybe the uh, Back to the Future card game as well um, that one of my friends is really interested in getting. I might get that as well. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for um, tuning in to uh, Table Gamers Apocalypse Episode 2 with Starflux. Um, as I said, please check out Episode 1 if you haven't already, or just, as I say, try and support this as much as you can. Um, but I've been Stephen Hesse, and uh, thank you very much. Bye guys. Bye bye.